Okay, so I want to talk to you about this Maths Olympiad Theory Building and Problem Solving Junior to Intermediate book that I just wrote recently. And I want you to, I want to explain sort of what the book is about and what's in it. So usually, I mean, the meta for Maths Olympiad in school maths goes something like this. Like in school, you do a lot of exercises and you do a lot of theory and the exercise are usually just like one one shot answers, and so the Olympiad meta has been to just minimize the theory, kind of just give you like a summary of the theorems, and and then they give you sort of really like interesting problems to solve. So the problems might take several steps and take several hours, um, but they really make you learn something through the investigation. Okay, so that's been the the meta. Um, and, but in a sense, you know, like, the, that method has come also from a time constraint because if you make Olympiad camp, you have like a, a week, two weeks a year to learn this kind of stuff. So you want to minimize wasted time and essentially they just want to train to do well in like the international maths Olympiad. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give students a holistic education. So. I want to teach students to be good at maths in a way that doesn't exclude them from the possibility of being a professional mathematician, okay? But I'm mainly doing it to advance their education and being like, just intelligent, educated people, okay? So I, I'm not interested in preparing people just for one specific exam and taking shortcuts to maximize their scores, okay? So what I want to do, so, so not only do I have the problem solving aspect there, I actually have like the theory that's in depth as well. The theory covers, so not only does it cover the high school syllabus and the Olympiad syllabus, like it covers it in a way that I think um, you'd want to cover it to have a complete mathematical education. Okay, so like things are proved, for example, um, not just stated, and they're stated correctly. Okay. Um, not just stated and believed, and sometimes they're actually wrong. Um, and the problems, there are exercises like in school, but there are also problems like in the, the Math Olympiad that will prepare you for those Math Olympiad exams. Um, but at the same time, you get all the benefits of investigating and everything. Um, but the point is, even if you don't do well in the Olympiads or you stop doing Olympiads, you, you, you get to keep that long-term education that we've got, which is theory building and problem solving. So problem solving is, um, and usually people just tell you the problems, right? <clears throat> they don't tell you the solutions and how to solve them. And there's a good, there's a good reason for that too, but <clears throat> I also try to explain what problem solving is <clears throat> and give you examples of how people might actually solve these problems. But uh, I guess people don't realize the relationship between problem solving and theory building, which is Theory building is a rather modern um, keyword in maths, where you're like, you're basically just, so if you, so it's, it, you can even think of it as a problem solving approach, right? So theory building is kind of like, you just centrally expand your understanding of something until the problems kind of naturally crack, okay? Um, and, and obviously that's assuming someone with a lot of maturity and um, <clears throat> and confidence at maths. So the naturally crack might actually involve a bit of sort of creative thinking and lateral thinking with the application of the theory to the problems. But the point is, like, if you do this, eventually the problems will all be solved around it. Okay. So you can view theory building as a problem solving strategy. And also, while you're building theory, there's lots of problems that naturally arise and you might have to apply your problem solving skills to build the theory so it's very interesting that way um, but <clears throat> and actually when it comes to problem solving a lot of the students actually naturally build theory especially the good ones these days naturally build theory around the problem solving because it's gotten to the point where actually students are citing previous Olympiad problems to solve current Olympiad problems which is kind of interesting and so I guess the difference being is that they're building the theory from the problem instead of from a central kind of central topic um, to organize the understanding. So obviously 
you can either start from what you know and get to this, the problem, or you can start from the problem and get it back to what you know. Um, yeah. Okay, so this book is not just a book, okay? Like, I should also mention it's alive, okay? It's alive in the sense that there's these, like, QR codes where, like, you can literally update, sort of, the book gets updated and you can ask questions in the comments and essentially it links to unlisted YouTube videos, sometimes public. Uh, you can get an update for what's going on or ask questions that you don't understand. So it's not just a book. Okay? It's really it's really a it's a program. Okay? And this gives you an insight to maybe what our school is like. Someone who's maybe too far away to learn directly from our school or for some reason can't do it. Um, so in terms of the topics, so I've organized it like Olympiad. Um, and you, but you'll find as you do maths, it becomes less productive to organize maths and topics, even though when you like publish papers, you'll have to submit like a topic thing or something. Right. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to go soon. Um, so I have combinatorics, number theory, algebra, geometry, and yeah, so combinatorics, we start with like choices and probability. You know, you could think you could learn all this stuff on your own, sure, but this is probably a very good way to learn it on your own, even, with my guidance. Um, and modular arithmetic and bases is the first number theory chapter. Factorization and expansion for algebra. Circumcircles and incircles for geometry. And then, and then we have some more advanced topics because we're kind of transitioning to intermediate as well. And you'd be surprised how many people start junior and don't know any of these things, or even they don't even know this in senior. Okay. Um, but we start with proofs, then like Diophantine equations, graph theory, trig and complex numbers. Then the geometry, we get more into configurations like um, X circle, in circle, author center, author triangle, centroid, Euler line, line point circle. And we get a bit into Barry bash, complex bash, board bash. So we've got to plant the seed for the future, even though I don't really encourage um, too much specialization early on. just want to kind of like give people an idea of what, what's, what's ahead, and then there's obviously some exams. So a lot of the reference is to AIMO in Australia, but potentially, I mean, if you're in America or in, in any English-speaking country, this would be like the first course in Maths Olympiad. So it should cover enough for you to be able to actually do well in the AIME, but obviously the AIME has a very um, has difficult, very difficult time constraint um, that you have to take care of, which is not necessarily purely mathematical. But but the answer format also kind of supports it, so it's not too bad. Um, yeah. So what kind of level? Does this work? so obviously it'll be too hard for most people when they start as things, and you are trying to get better, right? Like it's no point reading a book where you understand everything straight away. You have to actually work to learn it. But you know, you could start this in year seven, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, you could last you all the way to year ten, um, maybe even longer, depending on what kind of sort of intensity you're doing this. Um, so it should cover the first level of the Maths Olympiads very well. So in Australia, it'd be like AIMO, maybe getting a bit close to senior contests. You have a bit of ATT, junior O level, one of the towns. In America, it'd be like the AIME, um, American Invitational Maths Examinations. Um, and in a lot of the... Um, other countries, it's it'd still be like it'd be like your four hour your four hour exam, but you know it might have more than four questions sometimes. So the AIM has ten questions, AIM has like fifteen questions. So um, obviously there's some there's some things to do with like three question exam and stuff like that um, as well. But yeah, and there's obviously problem sets, some solutions. I even put like some sample solutions that my students wrote in here. Because I guess it's more about, you know, it's not it's not really about what I know. It's about what I can get your, your students to know, you know. Um, so it's actually this has has actually taught actual students. Um, 
And there's another two books coming out in the Mats Olympiad series. I've got Intermediate to Senior, and I've got Senior to Professional, okay? So, keep an eye out for them. Um, yeah, so the book will probably be a little bit on the expensive side in comparison to other books. So this is registered at 175 Australian. Um, but it really is to emphasize the quality over other books. Um, originally, I wasn't even really going to sell this book. I was just going to give it to my students. Uh, but I guess well, I have extra copies, and if other people who want to learn, um, I shouldn't really stop them. Um, but yeah, so I don't really have that many copies, though. If people are interested, I'd like to go print some more. Um, yeah, so here it is. Maths Olympiad, Theory Building and Problem Solving. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. If you have any other interesting you want me to talk about, uh, leave them in the comments as well. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, like, maybe sorry for the low energy for some people, but like, I myself hate watching videos where like they keep getting me all riled up. It's kind of, I just kind of want to like relax and just have some low energy content for easy stuff you know I want to save my high energy for like actually doing maths or something important you know I don't want to watch a video and have someone really just suck all my energy out maybe it's different for extroverted people I'm pretty sure but um, yeah I'm not, I'm not really interested in shouting at people so just um, yeah watch if you're interested don't watch if you're not interested but uh, I would like you to subscribe though, okay? If you could subscribe, that would be really good. Thanks.